Nat 20. Welcome back to Nat 20. We're doing another history episode of the continent of Tilthania. I'm the, your DM for the Old Demons Gage, and with me, I've got Clayton, just to chat about the history of the Avranches Treasure Horde. So, just a little bit of background on the Treasure Horde itself. So, before Jinmar Arnleif and her pirates settled Tilthania, Jinmar was one of the richest people on the continent, after years and years of successful pirating. Eventually, a sailor needed to anchor on an inhabited island to wait out a storm, and they found a gigantic hoard of treasure, gold and jewels hidden on the island. This is Jinmar's treasure, that she and her crews had accumulated, accumulated over the last over 25 years of pirating. So the sailor took some for himself while waiting for the storm to end, and then told the nearest local government about it. And word got out, and the king eventually sent a huge army, or huge navy of ships to the island to try to ambush Jinmar and her crew, and try to take back all of the treasure. But when they got to the island, it was completely bare of any treasures whatsoever. Jinmar and her crew had found out about the ambush, so they had rushed to the island and picked it dry and then made their way out. And because of this, Jinmar knew that they would pretty much be on the run forever, now that the magnitude of her treasure was known. So she went to, she decided she would set sail for new lands, and she told her crew about her plans, and pretty much all of them decided to join her. So that's, they set sail with all of their wealth just days later. After a few months of sailing, they came upon the continent which is now known as Tilthania, and they settled on what is now called Avranches. And somewhere there, Jinmar had hidden her gigantic hoard of personal treasures. It has never been found, though. And it's estimated that her treasure hoard could be worth like millions upon millions of gold pieces. And it includes gold, silver, jewels, magic items, historical significant art from the old country, ancient paintings that are found in caves in Tauthania, and much, much more. So no one's ever been able to find this actual treasure hoard and take all the treasure treasures from it. But occasionally every few years, some random piece of ancient or super old treasure will turn up somewhere on the island in either like on the beaches, the catacombs beneath, or supposed catacombs that people say they have found in hidden caves, grottos, or even just under the sea. And there are rumors of, a, of the huge treasure hoard being hidden beneath the island itself, but no one has been able to find it. Yeah, so now I'll kind of talk through a few of the major party, adventuring parties that have tried to find this treasure. So one of the first one, one of the earliest ones was called the Golden Gauntlets. It was party of a human wizard, a Goliath, Goliath fighter, dragonborn druid, turtle cleric, and a tiefling bard. They're probably one of the most famous and successful adventuring parties in the history of Tilthania, and they're famous for stuff like defeating a dragon that decimated a small village in the early years of Tilthania, and doing lots of other deeds that end up kind of changing history in a good way, or becoming history in one way or, or another. So this dragon, they had found it, destroyed, killed it, destroyed its lair, and none of them had died during this battle. And they came back to Stillsby with carts filled with gold, jewels, and stories to tell. I would consider not dying a win, personally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if I'm going to fight a dragon, the whole goal is to not die. Yeah. What kind of dragon was it? Uh, this one was a uh, red dragon that had turned evil. Are they always evil? I'm not sure. Red dragons are always evil. Are they? Okay. Yeah. Then well, chromatic I, is like red, blue, green. They're always evil. Oh, okay. According to the monster manual. 
black, black, red, green, blue, and uh, white. Yeah, and and there's right, metallic yeah, where yeah. it's like copper, bronze, silver, gold, and uh, uh, bu- 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 copper, bronze, silver, gold. I'm missing one. Copper, bronze, silver, gold. Can't think of what I'm missing on this. Oh, well, those are always the good yeah. ones. Oh, okay. And then those are the ones that can polymorph. And then technically chromatic isn't able to polymorph, but it's DD. Most people let them polymorph anyway. Yeah. Because it's cooler. But yeah, they killed an evil red dragon. Yeah. I approve. Was it an ancient red dragon? Uh, it was just an adult. Oh! Famous. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> wussies. But it's the easy way. Some of the other deeds they've done is stuff like taming Pussies. a family of manticores and drawing them into battle against hill giants. Malachina a dragon after a dare from a fellow adventuring party. Is that an adventure? That's like a weird <laughs> drunk fucking... Yeah. How do you milk a dragon? <laughs> they knew somehow. Uh, they stumped another dragon in a game of riddles. Okay, that's kind of impressive. They conned the god of trickery by doing the trick where you sneak up behind someone, tap them on one side, and then go on the other side. Now you're just making shit up. <laughs> <laughs> a god of trickery would never fall for such a ploy. Uh, they stole treasure from a dragon turtle. At one point, they ended up tying a rope to the tail of a purple worm, attaching it to a like small cart, and then riding in the cart after the purple worm. Underground. Yeah. That's fucked. They must have gotten severe bludgeoning damage from falling debris. They survived. Doesn't mean they didn't get severe <laughs> yeah. bludgeoning damage from falling debris. <laughs> Uh, they had convinced a priest of Lathander to switch to worshipping Kelevmore, which is the goddess god of death. Uh, convinced That's a- not a hero thing to do. <laughs> That's a weird <laughs> thing to do. Why would you do that? <laughs> it's just showing like their ability to convince other people and their power and stuff like that. Maybe they just convinced everyone they did all this stupid shit and they didn't actually do any of it. Could be. I never trust a fucking turtle. They also convinced a demogorgon worshipping demon to worship the thunder. And they apparently raced dinosaurs that they had found on another plane. They raced dinosaurs? Yeah. Like riding dinosaurs. And this is the them. Avengers? <laughs> like, what the fuck is happening? And there's a lot of other stories that people tell about them. Are they even alive still? No. Uh, they were way back in the early days of Teltania. Even like the uh, the dwarf is dead. Wait, right. there wasn't a dwarf. No, uh, there was. You always want to be the turtle. Yeah, there was the human wizard named Che Daygloom, the a goth fighter named Kuano Wild Eye Nialu. Oh my god! The fuck did you do? <laughs> Dragonborn druid named Narfros, Kilimist. Kilimist. Yeah, I kill a mist. <laughs> A uh, turtle cleric named Tyro, and a tiefling bard named Morokir. Did you just like fall over and let your face hit the keyboard? And, like, <laughs> that's how you made most of those? I approve. <laughs> Dragonborns are cool. I'm going to make a Dragonborn character gauge. It's going to be a. You used to have one. I don't talk about Balthazar. <laughs> Balthazar is like one of those shadow characters yeah. that no one wants to see ever again. Also, because the Ranger class is garbage, anyone who says different is wrong. 5th edition Rangers trash. Yeah, it, well, from the player's handbook ones. Like the... Oh, the sub stuff even isn't that good, the, honestly. There's, like, there are two that are good. Uh, there's the... Gloomstalker? Yeah, Gloomstalker is good. I like that one. I mean, the only good thing about Gloomstalker is you do a lot of stuff in the, in the dark. Yeah. And what's the other one I'm thinking of? Either Monster or Horizon Walker. Horizon Walker. I don't know anything about Horizon Walker. They're they're really cool. I like them. All I know is that apparently 3.5 Rangers were broken, and then they're like, we should nerf Rangers. So they just turned them into like bumbling buffoons. Yeah. Uh, so this adventuring group actually got the name of the Golden Gauntlets after a especially successful adventure where they had lots of gold so they decided to make their own golden gauntlets and that's how they got their group name this is like a a douchey group of celebrities (laughs) like an entourage but no actual celebrity and then they're yeah (laughs) Yeah, man let's melt all this gold down we could use to give to the poor and let's make cool gauntlets yeah exactly so like them 
Eventually, they decide to search for the greatest treasure of all, Jinmar's treasure hoard. <laughs> they studied Avranches for months on end, analyzing underground maps, searching history books, and interviewing anyone who might have any ideas about the treasure hoard. And eventually, they came up with a plan. Blow They're- up the island. <laughs> this is the type of party they would think of that. Honestly, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what uh, if we just, like, completely explode it? <laughs> Dude, it's a stellar idea, bro. They were sure that there was a large stretch of catacombs underneath the city and thought that there had to be an entrance somewhere. So they searched and searched, but couldn't find any mention or clues about any entrances. So they decided to look around the coast for caves or tunnels. And eventually they did did find one on the south side that led to a series of catacombs. They explored this for days on, like for probably four days straight, not even coming up for anything else, and ended up getting lost on multiple occasions. But they couldn't find any routes that came to any treasure or treasure hoards or anything like that. At one point, while they were investigating, they did notice a slight necrotic magic summer. They couldn't pinpoint exactly where it was or what it was coming from or... Fuck you, car that's honking. Dude, I don't like our neighbors at all. Yeah. Yeah, I actually noticed the guy honking today, this morning. It's so annoying, man. Like, just fucking stop. I think his alarm went off. Yeah, that's what happened. You put your key in, and you turn it, so the car is on. Is the guy out there? Yeah, he's in the fucking front seat right now. Put your key in. Yeah, we're watching you, that's right. Dude, turn it off. The fuck is this dude doing? Dude, put your key in, bro. Jesus Christ. You have to put your key in. It won't stop until you put the key in, bro. Holy there you shit. Go. That was fucked. What were we talking about? Um, we were there in the catacombs, slight necrotic. They noticed the slight necrotic magic at one section of the depths. I mean, in the catacombs. But they couldn't actually figure out the exact point it was coming from, why it was there, or what it was for. I mean... Catacombs are pretty cool find anyway. Yeah. I mean, this place was supposed to be uninhabited. Jesus. Okay. Supposed okay. to be. Un- <laughs> Sorry, our neighbors are noisy. Uh, but. The are you fucking kidding me? Anyway, guys, bringing it back in. <laughs> Zoning us back into the atmosphere, uh, the ambiance of a D&D chat. Uh, catacombs are pretty cool. Oh my god, this guy is brutal with his car. Like, what the fuck is he doing? I don't know. Don't even cut this out. No, <laughs> I'm going to keep it in. <laughs> yeah. If we ever get famous, they'll know that they disappointed yeah. us. Yeah. Dude, put your oh key my in, bro. Oh, fucking God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I think I can start talking about the catacombs again. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, they, no one, like, they've just found Avranches and then they started building a city, right? Yeah. So, the fact that there's catacombs there makes, like, no sense. Yeah. So, that's kind of a weird find. Yeah, exactly. Pretty good place to hide your gold. Yeah. Especially when you start sensing necrotic energy. Mm-hmm. Also, I remembered what this group of party guys reminds me of. It's the uh, Samuel L. Jackson and Dwayne The Rock Johnson from The Other Guys. The two guys. <laughs> yeah. The legendary cops are just total douchebags about yeah. it, too. They're like, yeah, what up? We love you, New York. <laughs> we love you, Web Ranches. Yeah, that is basically, basically them. Okay. Uh. So eventually, after not being able to find anything really, they decided to go back up to Avranches to process what they'd found and take a small break from it. But when they went back to try to find the catacombs and the cave, it was nowhere to be found. They shouldn't have left, man. Yeah. I thought you were going to say they all died of mysterious circumstances. No. no. So after this, they kind of just... Re- Some of them... Two of them retired, and then the others kept on treasure hunting. But they never could find anything more about the treasure hoard. So they never got to make more golden gauntlets? No. Are you fucking kidding me? Jesus Christ, these guys are idiots. 
Oh, dude, look at that kid on his scooter. <laughs> that kid on his scooter. Whoa. We're not used to like filming right beside the window, you guys. Yeah, we usually film downstairs, but we're filming upstairs right now. Oh my god, that kid's so good. Why there's so much honking noise from our idiot neighbor who doesn't know what the fuck he's doing with Whoa! the car. Whoa! That kid jumped a curb on his scooter. It was freaking sweet, dude. <laughs> Wish I was that cool, bro. Uh, so. Anyway, D&D. Yeah. So I'll get at the second adventuring group now. So these adventures were called the Mighty Titans. And they were a group of. Not, not, were they teenagers? No. Because I'm saying if they were teenagers. Oh, god damn it. Fuck you. Well, I didn't say it. Fuck you. So yeah. the Mighty Titans were a group of five Goliaths from the northern mountains of Teltania. It's like a boy band. Kind of, yeah. Uh, there was a barbarian, fighter, paladin, sorcerer, and monk. And I don't feel like going over the na- their names right now because it's a real tongue twister. Full of different vowels that don't go where vowels are supposed to go because goliaths have weird names i genuinely feel bad for the sorcerer goliath (laughs) (laughs) the only non-martial character there also goliaths like sorcerer and goliath is a weird combo because like he's gonna have like shitty health and armor class yeah despite being a giant it worked though did it yeah they were um They spent years together fighting off orcs, giants, and other monstrosities in the mountains of Deltania. And this is until their their leader, the fighter, had a vision. It was a vision of a purple worm burrowing into a gigantic hoard of treasure. And there was a slight light coming from above the uh, mound of treasure. And it ended up with seeing a plaque. And on the plaque was the name Jinmar. Iron, iron leaf so a week or two after that they finally figured out that Jinmar was actually the first settler of Teltania and they decided to <laughs> I genuinely don't understand what they're doing they're just looking under the hood and then occasionally the horn honks oh, oh someone else has left to join there's another person coming Another person from the house? Yeah. Oh. That house is like a clown car. They just keep coming, man. I genuinely believe 45 people live in there. Yeah, there have to be at least like 10 people. So, anyway. Uh, <laughs> they, they found li- out Jinmar yeah. lived there. Yeah, so they decided to travel to Avranches and tell people about their vision and start to look for the Avranches treasure hoard. So... Because they saw the light coming down, they knew that if it if the treasure hoard was there, it, they'd probably be able to dig down to it. So they were able to get permission from the king of Avranches to dig at a site that they thought would be plausible as the as being above the treasure hoard. And to do this, they just had to get uh, promise a third of the treasure with the royal family. So they dug for a couple of months find the occasional tunnel or cave, and eventually coming to a depth of over 500 meters and an overall um, tunneled area of about two kilometers under the city. But they still didn't find any treasure or any hordes or anything like that or any purple worms. Why didn't they dig deeper? Uh, eventually they dug so, so much that it was becoming it would soon become dangerous for the integrity of the city over top of it. Who cares, man? They're just people. Yeah. But maybe they watch Lord of the Rings too and they know if you dig too deep. Algora. <laughs> <laughs> kind of left me hanging there, Gage. I didn't know what to do, so I finished the sentence. But uh, So they they weren't able allowed to actually dig more, so they were ordered to stop. And the only thing they could find when they were digging here was a slight divination magic sense that again like the guys before them they couldn't find out exactly where it came from or what it was for or what it was to tell and just weeks after they were ordered to stop there was a slight earthquake earthquake that actually caused the majority of the hole to cave in and fill in taking a small section of the city with it oh 
But the Mighty yeah. Titans were long yeah. gone before that <laughs> happened, man. They were like, oh, let's get out of here. Yeah. It wasn't a very populated part of the city. Like, this is an area that was oh, kind okay. of just park area. But the not whatever. important people lived? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. As long as it wasn't important people. Yeah. That would have been unfortunate. Uh, and unable to find any else about the treasure hoard they just went back to the mountains to occasionally fight against monsters giants or other enemies they went to lift iron <laughs> we are goliaths so that's the second major adventuring party that had thought they might have found something but it wasn't anything really so now is the third one which the group party name was called the southern seekers and it was a group of four Ericocra and one Kenku from the uh, from Summersdale. So it was a Kenku ranger named Nut, which I'll get to how he got his name in a little bit. Uh, ranger Ericocra named Krill, a monk Ericocra named Araf, and a, pal- a paladin Ericocra named Gurk, and a sorcerer Ericocra named Rez. So... At one point, the fork. What? I don't know. Just the Kenku. Why? Why is he there? <laughs> so, this group of four Kokra were an adventuring group before they found the Kenku. And on one of their adventures, they saw just a little Kenku boy just sitting abandoned on the side of the road with little with him. And this like, dumb cousin of ours talks funny. <laughs> we should bring him along. <laughs> so, they decided to adopt him. And bring him on their adventures and try to teach him how to adventure and live. But he was nuts, so they called him Nut. Close. He so, ate a lot of nuts, so they called him Nut. That is pretty much it. So <laughs> yeah, I- no- I'm going to tell the story. So I'll tell the story. So they- what happened was <laughs> that once upon a time, there were four, three, four, four Aarakocra traveling along the road and then they found a kenku and they said this guy's dumb as hell we should bring him along as a pet and then they grew to love the kenku when they all realized that it's not a pet it's a legitimate humanoid race so then they kept him around and he said this guy's nuts and he won't stop eating my macadamia nuts let's call him nut and then slowly the kenku learned english so a part of that is similar so they did they adopted him and but the kenku was silent for the majority of while they were traveling for a long time and wouldn't even say his name but at one point while they were while everyone was eating around the campfire one of the air coker joked around another saying something along the lines of you are what you eat so the kent the kenku heard this and he realized he was eating nuts at the time so eventually he he named himself nut kenku are so dumb like in a good <laughs> cute way but so they raised him as they traveled on the road, adventuring and doing quests for people in need. Eventually, they had accumulated enough money that they were able to go to an artificer friend and have her craft wings for the Kenku to attach to his arms. They were like, bro, you're slowing, it. You're slowing the, the feather bros down, guy. We need you to get some feathers. Not! Not! <laughs> Not to fly! <laughs> no, bro, that's the problem, man. That's why we got you these wings. Because <laughs> you can't fly, nut, you fucking idiot. I like them. These are likable. Yeah. The yeah. douchey other guys are not likable. Uh, so this led to immense fame, especially with the Kenku race, since this is the first Kenku that, would be, that has actually been able to fly once again since they've been cursed. By the Raven Queen, I think. Which is like way, 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 way back. Kenku were, allowed, were able to fly and I then... I think it was yeah. the Raven Queen, yeah. yeah. But then they were like dicks. She's like, never again. Yeah. And they were like, no. And they became flightless and dumb. Yeah. So with this, they gained a lot of fame. And lots of people were hiring them to complete quests or adventures or anything for them. So eventually the success led to the king of Avranches, hiring them to search for Jinmar's treasure hoard. For a third of the profits. And they would split it 50-50. Ooh. Damn, he's a lot nicer to them than he was the Mighty Titans. No, the the Mighty Titans, the king was going to take 30%. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, 
That, oh. This Canada's taking 50%. Oh, damn. Well, he's probably yeah. being so mean. At least yeah. he can take advantage of the Kenku. Yeah. What a dinkosaurus. But he allowed them any equipment and per- personnel that they would need for the search. Take as many slaves as you desire. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, six will do. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, slavery. This was back when slavery was a thing. Yeah. So they spent a month investigating the private records and maps that the king had supplied and researched in every possible cave, cavern, tunnel, and grotto in Avranches. They finally thought they may have found the right tunnel and went to investigate. It was a hidden tunnel that was about three meters in diameter that was obscured by other maps by another tunnel that was over top of it. So they went down this tunnel with five extra armed guards, and the tunnel just kept on going down, 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 and down for miles until down, it opened down, down, up into a cavern. To the burning ring And fire. the cavern ended up being a layer of an an old layer of a purple worm. Or it's, they, nest, it's they nesting layers. site, not a, not a layer, but like nesting place. They have those? think so yeah i thought they just like i don't know I, i'm not a big purple worm guy i thought they just yeah. constantly moved around eating dirt. no i think that they do well they would have to nest in some places i guess so how do they make babies someone draw some rule 34 for us please don't <laughs> not allowed on that site anymore <laughs> Uh, after a few minutes of investigating, they found no traces of any purple worms or any other monsters. But a few minutes later, while they were investigating some tunnels that branched off here, they were ambushed by an alhoon, an, an oblax, and an ooze. An alhoon is like a kind of mind flayer. And a battle ensued. Oh, I do know. I, it took me yeah. a I can remember. Yeah. Which ended with the oblax, ooze, and alhoon dying, as well as four of the guards... And two of the air cochras. What? Yeah. Bro! You killed them? Yeah. You sick fuck, Gage. So saddened by the loss of their friends, they decide to... They still decide to continue searching these off offshoots of tunnels as a tribute to their friends. We have to do it for them, nut. Nut! <laughs> <laughs> They found out that the Oblax would sneak to the surface occasionally at night um, and use its power to transform transform to make people follow it down into the depths, thinking it was its loved one or friend or someone who's lost or something like that. And then Dalhoun would capture it, take its brain after the Oblax took some of the memories, and then... All that was left was given to the ooze. And it seemed like this is this had been going on for a few years now. It's a pretty dope fucking team up. Yeah. Uh, so as they investigated the t- various tunnels here, all of them either came to dead ends or looped back to the main chamber. And the only other thing they found was a slight trace of illusory magic at the end of one of the tunnels. Couldn't find out what it was. Again, they couldn't find out what it was for, why it was there, or how long it's been there, or anything like that. So they decided to. They noticed that the tide was starting to come. Oh, wait, no, this isn't the tide one. Uh, <laughs> they brought the bodies of the comrades back up to the surface and had a large burial ceremony for them. And when they went back to try to investigate it again, they couldn't find the passage ever again. Sensing a theme. And after that, the two Eric Coker and the and Nut retired. Happy ending. Yeah. <laughs> Our friends are dead. We should retire, man. <laughs> what are we going to do? We can't be the two Eric Coker and Nut. And the four Eric Coker and Nut. Hey man, why is why does only Nuts name get put in the name? Dude, don't you understand anything about PR? <laughs> I I said all of the other names. They're not important. But none of that. No one would care about any of them because they're not Nut. Except Girk is a good name. No, nah. is it as good as Nut though? No, exactly. So the next adventuring group that 
got somewhat close to finding something was a band called Guided by Glory. It was a band of bards, so a dwarf drummer named Thalmar Stoneslammer, a half-orc mandolin player named Garaz Boulder, a fire jassy singer named Flicker, and an elf violin player named Kenharvis Omarum. Guided by the glory. Guided by glory. Guided by glory. It's a great band name. So this band was a famous band, one of the most famous bands that have, has ever toured throughout Tiltania, and they we were loved by all. The Motley Crew. <laughs> <laughs> Is that children or a small yeah. squirrel dog? <laughs> uh, so as a promotion for their next tour, they announced that the tour would be called the Tour for Treasure. And they announced that the tour would end in Avranges, and they were going to find the Jinmar Treasure Hoard. They were so confident that they would find it that as part of their promotion, they even had their band manager, a powerful wizard, cast geese on them. That they would perform it in Avranches every night after their search until they found the treasure. And a tour. Their quests are tours. That's, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's genius. <laughs> that's stupidly genius. Uh, but just a few weeks after a geese was cast, their band manager actually died due to an unforeseen illness. <laughs> and he was a powerful wizard, so it was like a high level geese spell. Oh man, and he got hit by that coronavirus, eh? It was an unforeseen illness. <laughs> <laughs> coronavirus is spreading, you guys. Fist bump, don't high five. <laughs> uh, so they still ended up uh, traveling and touring, and they ended up pre- having to perform in Avranches for 221 days. Because they just continued searching for the treasure on and on and on and on. And Continue to fail their saving throws on and on yeah. and on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they only missed playing about 20 days and just took the damage. And that is usually more near the end of the 221 days. I would be very exhausted by that too. Yeah. Guys, we can't go out and perform today. Why? My throat is bleeding. <laughs> Look, every time I open my mouth, blood comes out. Dude. <laughs> That's not healthy. This tour's been hell. (laughs) At one point on day 208, they had finally found a passage that looked promising. It led underneath the city and led to a cavern where they all seemed to feel the most happy they'd ever felt in their lives. And when they came back up, they told of a slight enchantment magic sense as well. But when they tried to lead people back down the passage, it's no longer there. And due to this, people started to believe they had just gone mad. And they eventually did go mad and ended up killing themselves because they just couldn't handle it anymore. Doesn't geese end at one point? It, it ends after a year. A year. A year. Uh, when it's at a high enough level. Damn. But there was no no one near of branches or that anyone knew about that was a high enough wizard to actually cancel the spell. No one knew to spell magic? It had to be like a level 9. Oh, isn't it remove curse? Or yeah, I, just I think level? so. Yeah. yeah. Rip. Yeah, it had to be a super high level. And then the next adventuring group was called the Unlikely Wanderers. These are just band names. <laughs> <laughs> And this party, this party, they're not really actually much of a party, but it is a dwarf named Balmond, a changeling, changeling named Mort, a halfling named Falder, and a dragonborn named Josira. Why aren't they a party? I'm getting to that. It's because they don't like each other? No, it wasn't that. It's because they liked so each other too much. If, they weren't if, a party, If you allow me family. to continue, you'll learn why they're not really a party. They were too much of a family more than a party. I see what you're going at here. Yeah, this is all. Go- this is all like the uh, Fast and Furious. Yeah, yeah. It's all about family, Dom. <laughs> That's why we killed seventy-eight people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so this party was actually just a group of four of Rancher's, of Rancher's drunkards. And at one night after excessive drinking, like most people would probably have died to alcohol poisoning at that point. But they okay. ended up deciding to wander the city. Not really deciding, they just ended up wandering the city. Like when I got drunk and chased coyotes. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't think I wanted to do it earlier in the day. I just did that. Yeah. Good thing I didn't find them. I'd have some scars. <laughs> so they don't actually remember anything about that night. But the next morning, they woke up in a hotel room with an with ancient and extravagant treasures. Oh, them. for fuck's sake. The drunks find the gold. <laughs> Are you kidding me? It's been appraised that they made, made out with probably around 3,000 gold pieces worth of treasures. And then they died night. the next day when they tried to drink again. <laughs> They're like, we gotta do it again! And then they died of alcohol poisoning. <laughs> and it's assumed that this was all from Jinmar's treasure hoard. But because of how drunk they were, they remember nothing about the night i just picture like four dudes in like a giant treasure hoard like just going over and they're like stumbling around like putting hats on their each other like gold things like that. <laughs> stumbling falling over <laughs> how do we get out of here the only thing they do know is they had a slight sense of conjuration magic when they woke up and they had kept this treasure they got a secret because they thought maybe they had stolen it from someone but after a month of waiting about any news about a robbery or missing treasure, there was no news. So they assumed that it was just an unknown mass of treasure. So soon, a- soon after this, not really worried anymore, they began drinking a lot again and a few times tried to find the treasure hoard, but they could never find it. Eventually, they got drunk enough that they started bragging about their one drunken night. And mercenaries and cutthroats had heard this at some other tables and eventually followed them ho- to their homes, tried to torture them for information about the treasure, but they knew nothing. So because they thought that they were just keeping quiet about it, they eventually killed them and stole their treasure. That's some fucking three brothers Harry Potter shit yeah. right there. And no one knows who has the treasures now. Occasionally, there are groups of friends or adventurers who try to replicate their process and get extremely drunk at the same taverns. And they hope you unknowingly follow the same path that the unlikely wanderers had walked. But no one's ever been able to replicate it. So instead of like the Golden Mile pub crawl, it's the Jin Mara crawl. <laughs> yeah. Bro, we'd start at this bar, get hammered, go to this bar, get extra hammered, go to this bar, we'll forget where we're going. And Boom. then we'll find the treasure. And then we'll find the treasure. Or get eaten by a gelatinous cube. Yeah. Remember, kids, if you smell conjuration magic, you're going the right way. So the last, more famous group of adventurers that tried to find this treasure were named the Boldest Blades. And they were... Uh, adventuring party who all had been in the, an underground gladiator's pit at somewhat different times like they never actually fought against each other but they had seen each other fight at one point or another eventually they were each, each of them were able to be champions at some point or another and decided to retire from the pits and just watch and make wages instead and this party was made of a, a tiefling fighter named Taiva an Asimir barbarian named Nienlar Lightmont, a barbarian paladin, I mean a bugbear paladin named Burr Gumpf, and a furbold cleric named Venro. And eventually when they retired, they met, end up going for drinks, and decide to become adventurers. Man. Imagine being the furball that goes home and be like, what do you, the, like, goes to his little druid circle home. They're like, how was your day? He's like, I got in a gladiator fight. I do to get fucking banished immediately. Dude. Immediately banished. They'd be like, dude, furballs don't do that. He was already banished. Oh, okay. Because he's probably that one dude who's always fighting people in the furball camp. They're like, dude, stop <laughs> fighting everyone. He's like, no, it's in my blood. Well, this one had actually been captured beforehand and forced to go into the pits. And then he realized he loved the taste of blood. He realized he was a good fighter. And that he loved 
Blood. And that pretty much happened to all four of them. And they end up becoming some of the greatest mercenaries and monster hunters throughout the history of Teltania. Uh, some examples of their deeds include killing an adult black dragon, killing a beholder and destroying its lair, destroying a death knight, shattering an iron golem, destroying a mind flayer slayer, saving a town from a small army of the undead, killing the same Rakshasa three times, and quite a bit more. Did they find? Did the Rakshasa like come back a fourth time? Who knows. They, they never fought him a fourth time. They must have died before he came back. So between some of these, or actually after... Right. No, so uh, between two of these, they had found a posting to help out another adventuring group to discover the Jinmar Treasure Horde. This adventuring party, the Golden Lions, was known as one of the greatest treasure hunter crews at the time. But they wanted some muscle to help them just in case they searched for the treasure. So the Golden Lions had believed that they found an underwater wa- tunnel that could lead to the treasure hoard. So both parties met along the north side of Avranches and waited for low tide and then dove into the water. They awesome. swam to the passage, which was about 40 feet below the surface. And it took three minutes before they were able to get to a section where they could actually breathe. Thankfully, one of the Golden Lions had cast a spell to allow everyone to breathe underwater. And this passage led to another passage that went further down below the island. And it opened up into a large cavern. And it branched off into four different passages, each with a stone door sealing the way. After enough time... They were able to break through the doors they would not open themselves but after following each of the passageways they all came to dead ends but they were able to sense some faint magic in each of the passages that but couldn't get through the dead ends at all and they, fi- they realized that each passage was a different kind of magic on the eastern one they found they uh, felt at some type of illusion magic. To the south, if they felt, felt some kind of necromancy. To the north, conjuration. West, enchantment. And they noticed some divination magic coming from the center, but above the cavern. Bro, they didn't find that conjuration tunnel. No. <laughs> That's the key, man. It's a conjuration tunnel. They tried all that they could, but they couldn't figure out anything that these mad anything about this magic like where it was coming from what it did why it was there how long it was there for or or anything and soon the tide was beginning to rise and it was going to become more dangerous to actually leave this place so they left barely escaping with their lives and the next day they tried the trek again but the passageway wasn't there they searched for months for it again but never found it and it's assumed that This last cavern somehow links to all the other caverns that the other treasure hunters had found. And that's basically the history of the most famous or most possible adventures to find the treasure hoard. Damn, a lot of people tried. Yeah. And there are tons of other people who have tried with their own smaller adventuring parties, but none of them ever got anywhere close as this or were anywhere near as famous as they were. They didn't get as close. They didn't have as cool names. Yeah. (laughs) Fuck. We'll we'll find it. Do you have any questions about anything or comments? Um, Are any of those people still alive? Uh... There are, there's the Furbolg cleric from the Boldest Blades is still alive, but he is like in his late years. I forget how long Furbolgs live for. Hundreds of years. I think like 300. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so he's he's basically the only one. Or actually the Asmir Barbarian too, from the Boldest Blades. Okay. Uh, Nienlar Lightmont. Minyar, you'll be pay, being paid a visit soon. Yes. 
Both are super old and aged and... Don't Asmar live forever? Do they? I don't know. I'm not sure. I thought they were, like, descended from like angels. Like, Yeah. I thought they were descended Maybe. from, like, angels. They might be. Who knows? I don't care if he's on his fucking deathbed, okay? He's gonna answer my questions, okay? Blaze has been through hell. All right? He wants his fucking answers, man. Where's that treasure? All right? I need to buy some fucking stress pills to help me with the stress, okay? Cool. Yeah. Any other questions or comments about anything? Um, I don't think so. I think that's pretty much it. Okay. Is there much? No, I think that's it. Okay. So I think that's where we leave it for this history episode of the Avranches Treasure Hoard. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Bye bye.